as a full site team. So we have the library project team here, Mark Sullivan, DA Sullivan OPM, Phil O'Brien, um, Johnson Roberts architect, and Nathan Ketchell, GGD civil engineer. Um, so tonight we plan on submitting the nine copies of our site plan. Um, within the documents we have uh, senior center site design, senior center building, serial elevations, and the library site design in terms of where they're at right now. Uh, the library project's been in design now for roughly a month and a half. We've been in design for seven months, so they're a little further behind now. Um, but I think you'll notice in their package they hit upon setbacks, parking area, green area, and uh, site drainage. Um, currently, we have Berkshire Design doing the peer review for the Senior Center project, and they're going to get the documents that you're going to receive tonight in terms of the library project. They're going to get those tomorrow. So the goal is when we come back on June 19th, um, prior to the June 19th hearing. Why, why twitch June 19th? The idea is that was going to be the actual hearing. We'll, we'll determine that once we see the okay. plans and, and, and we'll Just one, one question. So that's a goal. Yeah. Who is given you authority to make this site plan presentation? Who gave you the authority? The, the, uh, the Senior Citizen Building Committee? The select board? Just, Who? I, I made the executive decision on my own as the OPM on the project. Who gave you that authority to do this? Nobody. Was there a vote taken? No? No. The select board's been well aware of the um, plan, and so yeah. they've been keeping us abreast of it. So we fully were aware of the fact that they were coming from the planning board tonight. Okay. Just curious. Okay. So um, whenever the hearing is, the goal is that the, the peer review is completed prior to that. That peer review is going to consist of a peer review of our documents, a peer review of the library's documents that you're receiving tonight. Um, so with that, we have nine steps. You guys want to hang? So you guys tell me we have nine sets. Do we hand them to you now? Yes. Please. You have the mailing labels too? Yeah. Now, since the, this is a municipal project, we don't, we're not going to charge a fee. So how are we going to just right over here, please? Thank you. The when it comes to type of the mailings, I'll put them in an envelope. I'll give them to who want give them to you, um, yeah, Jane. Jane. I'm sorry. And when it, when the invoice comes for the legal notice in the Gazette, we'll just give that to you, and you'll pay that directly. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, would you like us to get into very briefly? Okay. Chris, you guys want to get into? We just want a very brief. Well, this is not the this is not the public hearing, so we don't want anything more than a very fifty thousand foot view of what's going on. So I'm Tim Eagles, uh, principal with EDI. You have to spin that around. Yeah, sure. You have to show us. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Principal uh, with EDM with the architects on the project. Um, and basically, um, what's in your package uh, between, as Phil was saying, between the um, library design and the senior center design um, on the um, front of the uh, library package uh, there's a composite site plan which shows uh, the senior center and the library and the parking in the green space uh, all the requirements the town has are met in that um, but essentially we have, uh, as I think everybody's aware, the library on the west uh, corner of the site on Middle Street, uh, the senior center on the east corner of the site, um, parking in between uh, with the site circulation uh, one-way path um, through the site um, and a connection uh, back to uh, a service area here on the back side um, of the um, of the senior center, um, which we've basically been showing to the public and and uh, have run through uh, many times, but it's essentially the um, all the calculations we worked through and uh, the calculations for the town of 
Hadley are all met in terms of uh, parking and green space. Black coverage, well, all of that. Last time, somebody was in and uh, we said we wanted to see one site with their, the uh, library green space, the library parking. Where is the library parking and how big is their building? So they're, both buildings are approximately 12,000 square feet. Yes. Um, their parking is in this zone. It's around, and it comes in on the south side of the building. Um, there's a parking here, and then they'll share part of the senior center parking. So the idea is that they have parking that's associated with their building. Senior center has parking that's associated with the building. And there's, you know, there'll be overflow that can go back and forth. So one of the things we're concerned building. about is that each Taking this as one parcel. Joe, yeah. Joe, this is not the public hearing. Okay, so, all right. Let's, I, I think maybe what you're thinking about, going forward towards the public hearing, it would probably be very useful to have that plan annotated with <coughs> different colors showing what is the required green for the library, what is the required parking right. for the library, and by, and Right. No, now, you said Berkshire Design doing the review. Are they doing the review? I know they're doing the review for the drainage. Are they doing the review according to zoning too? Correct. They're doing the full review. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. You, okay. You're just ignoring Goodwin Memorial Library. As far as their existing parking is currently here, that all remained. That's not on as far as the piece of the property that these two buildings will reside on, that is not, their parking is off that. This, and is, will the, remain. This, this is not the public hearing. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Not the public okay. hearing. Not the public hearing. You can bring all these issues up to public hearing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, mailing labels are here. Yes. That's a, yeah. Reading by Jeff Gallardo, PHP Engineering. Okay, where are the mailing labels? Uh, well, these are, this is the list. No, I need, I need mailing labels. Either mailing labels or envelopes with names on them. This is not either. So this is the mailing address. So you're saying you need them on each of yeah, the Yeah, well, okay. what am I going to do yeah, with this? this? Unfortunately, we didn't have the, um, the sticker portions of that. So with the perforations shown on here? No. Okay, that doesn't apply. No, that okay. doesn't work. So. I need the mailing label before I do anything. But just to be clear, those are what you need on the label. This is yeah, correct you, information. In fact, if you, want to, if you want to take and cut these out and put them on an envelope, two sets of envelopes, that's perfectly fine. Okay, fine. But I just want to make sure that this is the correct Yes, exactly what you want. Yes. <coughs> we don't need the parcel and stuff like that. This we is need, need. We need, yeah, we need this right here. Perfect. Right. That came right from your website, which was okay. perfect. Okay. Yeah. Good. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Max, would you like me to put those on labels now for you? If you want to do that, that labels even on envelopes. Either, either way, way. Either whichever way. is easier for you. We need two sets. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Berkshire Design doing the review. We will schedule a public hearing for the 19th. We need Berkshire's design, Berkshire Design's comments no later in our hands than than uh, June 12th. Yes. Okay. Yep. And they should be aware of that. They yeah. are. Yeah. And for the public hearing, we need an architect's architectural drawing of what the project's going to look like for Middle Street, both the senior center and the library, true to colors, true to design. Um, it, what you call it? Exterior rendering. A rendering, yes, a color rendering. Okay. Um, from a view from standing on Metal Street. Yes. Okay. Probably either from the the northerly or the southerly entrance, if you would, so that you could kind of see both buildings. Okay. Which one? What you will see of the senior city. You're not going to see a lot of it. Sure. But at least what you'll look, look from that view. Okay. That's what we we'll typically coordinate. require for anything. We'll coordinate with the. Uh, okay. The library's are Okay. We don't need that before the meeting. Okay. Okay. We bring that to that meeting. Right. Okay. You want to make them check with the historical commission? They don't do that review anymore. Okay. Okay. We got a letter from the historical commission, but just for the record, back in November, the historical commission 
gave us an email and said that they are no longer interested, if you would, in doing or capable of, uh, they, want to, they will no longer be doing the architectural review um, of projects. And however, they did give a comment on this one for whatever reason, but they can't pick and choose, well, we're going to do this and we're going to do that, and they either do all or none. Is that in the historic district? Yes, that is in the only district. Because they don't want to do it anymore. They can't. They don't have enough people yeah. to hold meetings and, in a timely manner. And that and that that's fine because it was always a, um, it's a courtesy. A courtesy of them to have to review those kind of things. And if they can't do that anymore, then that's that's perfectly fine. You'll do it. Okay. Do we have an interest in the fact that this is in the historical district? And should we engage someone to tell us how it fits into the historical district? The zoning bylaw specifically says what it should look like. Okay. So okay, gotcha. gotcha. We'll we'll take a look at the drawings ourselves, and you'll see what comments come out of Berkshire Design because I think there's going to be a number of them that are going to be addressed on the. There'll be a number of comments on it. There will be some comments on the 19th that will not be uh, probably probably addressed. So we'll take it from there. Good. Very good. Thank you. See you on the 19th. Thank you. Thank you. Gives you enough time. Hmm? Well, is going to do the review. So all we're going to do is go no, for, for the uh, newspaper post. Oh yes, yes, that's one more. This is five. Mm -hmm. This is five. Set the date. Oh, really? Are you not involved in this? Because I feel they violated the open meeting law in their minutes. Thank you. And I filed a complaint with the AD's office. Okay. Well, that can all come out. Huh? That can all come um, Daniel and Jesse Dean. Hi. Hi. Hey guys. And Cooper. Hey, who? Cooper. 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 Hi, Cooper. Um, there's a little bit of uh, something to take a look at. Uh, my wife and I are applying for a business permit to start a fitness franchise in town uh, at 207 Russell Street in Hadley. Um, it's the new Hampshire Meadows Plaza. There's a, a nail salon and a mirror. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's fine. There's two white, brand new uh, okay. construction buildings. You got a lot, a lot of competition. Yes, there is. Uh, corporate tells us that that's a good thing, so we'll hope that they're accurate. But okay. no, we feel confident with the product. Um, What's the name of the business? Uh, it will be F45 Training Hampshire. Yeah. That's the fastest growing fitness franchise in the world. Uh, started in Australia, they sold hundreds there. Uh, there's now currently over 400 open in the states, and um, F45 Training Hampshire will be one of the top or first five open in Massachusetts, okay. ideally. Okay. I don't see a problem with it. Well, for sign, we have a signage. Signage. If you should look at the back of that. I've been working with a signage guy. Um, one is accurate, one, the other one that um, shows the one out at the uh, road would not be accurate. That would be in, um, I believe yeah, that, that page is not, um, it would just be a white, that one would be on the front of the gable end, and then the one that you were just looking at would be um, on the green sign, just have white letters that said F45 training, I'm sure. The owner's trying to keep the directory consistent, so we would stay with that. Is that internal or external letter? I believe I'm not allowed to have internal letter, right? Correct. Um, Correct. If, Externally. If I, that was a, that was a you can backlight it. Right? If, if you want. Right? How about a gooseneck? Gooseneck is fine. Okay. Some, but, but backlighting or gooseneck is okay. okay. Some people like gooseneck. Some, you know, excuse me. Some people like the appearance of a backlit sign. Okay. okay, where it kind of shows around the letters, mm -hmm. but the loose neck is fine. Okay. So that's roughly a nine square foot sign. I think it says 11, if I remember correctly, but um, that might have been some literature I had before. Uh, I think maybe priced that a little further. You're, 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 I mean, you're roughly four foot by two and a half feet, so you're, yeah, you're okay. well within. We'll keep it modest. Yeah, yeah. well, you're allowed up to. Uh, 40 square feet. Okay. But, but that wouldn't fit in that, that spot. That wouldn't fit in that spot either. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, is that the, the, the building sign is fine. Okay. And you're talking, this would probably be like half that size? 
No, I think it would just be nothing even close to that. It would just be, uh, just like this says Miracle Air in white letters, it okay. would say F-45 train. Oh, in white letters. Okay. Um, if we can work with either um, the owner to maybe even have a white, just a white logo, the star would go away, there'd be no colors, but um, it would be, you know, just white letters, nothing standing out with color. And the <coughs> layout is on the last page. Yeah, the we're not going to try to we, we approve the site plan design. So however, however much you take up is between you and the, uh, the owner. Okay. Okay. We're not. Zoning isn't completely concerned with the interior, with the with the interior footprint and what it looks like. Okay. It's pretty simple. It's a yeah. wide open space. For sure. What's the significance of F45? F is for functional. 45 is minutes. It's 40, 45 minutes of functional training. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to offer five to seven classes a day. Um, mostly for work hours and after work hours. Our classes will range between 15 and 25 people, depending on how we're doing and the time of day. Um, no, that's the significance of 45. No, what I could ask you, you if you could, I don't think we really need this, sure. but if you could email, you, you must have PDFs of these things. Of course. Uh, just email the contents to sure. planning at hadleyma.org. Planning, okay. It's out on the web, it's on our webpage. Sure. And we'll just have yeah. that. The Hadley MA website, the fine planning. Yeah. Okay. Need a motion. I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval on the basis of no exterior alteration and previously approved building. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Yeah. Once you get the once you get the sign for the uh, uh, street sign, just come back to it. Just what it's going to look like, really quick. Okay. And then just follow me like this. That's fine. Okay. 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 So why don't your, your building? You like me, if I do, if I can grab that from. My sign guy, would you like me to uh, send that along with the? Yeah, that'd be fine. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Could you just write down your mailing address on that? And James and Gannett, Cedo to Bois Sector. <coughs> no sector. Yes, sir. That's one of one of your things, Ram. Oh, the, one of the questions? Yes. The sectors have purchased a piece of property on French Street. Oh, uh, yeah. The gold Better. property. And they're wondering if they can subdivide it. So I have a previous survey. This is a land court survey. It looks different than most that you seen in the past. But anyhow, my question is this. <clears throat> if you look at this and hold the Mill River up, like you have it, if you look to your left, above French is a building, which is the house on the property. That's the house? Yes. Okay. And it's, it looks different than that, but anyhow, that's the general location of the house. So, in order to cut this, and I don't know if there's enough area here, I haven't done any recent work, I just have to get this question answered before I decide which direction to go in. Anyhow, where the house is, is 99 feet from the road to the top, or that's the river bank, it's not the top of the bank, it's the, it looks like it's the actual water at the time the survey was done in 1930. Okay, so, so it's 90 feet from there to there. Right. So I cannot cut the house out and make the Hadley box fit in there. Is this similar to things that we've done in the past where we are not making it any less conforming than it is. Can I utilize what's there and make make a lot that's got enough area? Uh, okay, you, you've got to explain more than that because I still don't know what you're asking for. Okay, so if, so this whole big piece, and granted French Street comes up and goes to, this is Mount Warner Road. Okay, that's okay. what I thought. Uh, French Street comes up here. Okay. There's, there's a piece of land across the road from this, but that's a moot point. 
So what they want to do is cut this into two lots potentially if there's enough area here. So by doing so, I have to start here, come this way, wherever French Street might be. Let's say we're over to here. So I get 30,000 square feet. I've got enough frontage. I've got enough area. I don't have the lot depth. But I'm not changing anything. It's pre-existing. Well, you got a you got a you got a house here that's pre-existing non-conforming. Correct. To give you another lot over here, to me, is way beyond the stretch. This is one lot, as far as I can see. I don't see how we could possibly get two lots out of it. Because. Because. It's just so tight. You're making it more non-conforming. You're making a non-conforming way more double non-conforming. Uh, I wouldn't go for it. Okay. Well, that's I mean that's what I'm here for. I need to I need to I, understand. I, I, but I you know, guys are coming from. French Street is the perfect perfect street to do something like this on, though. You know, if you wanted cluster housing, this is it. Have you gone down French Street lately? It's, no. it's pretty shabby. So it, it's, it's a pretty little shabby. misleading as to scale because the for instance they have what was that 189 feet? 58. 138 feet. Okay. But the uh, the but French Street comes out through here, so they have, they they have less than. Yeah, that. I got I got tax maps that roughly show the this dark lot is the that piece you there, and then they 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 own this. As well, this is where the old mill is, which is their house now. Okay, so this is this, but that's a separate lot. Correct. So my my big question is: Is this? We know it's pre-existing, non-conforming. The box doesn't fit in here. So, I you know, if it was a side yard setback or anything like that, if, if this was a long, narrow lot, I could cut it and say, all right, I don't have enough frontage. But I can get make the area work. So that's my biggest concern is if I can't get that box in there, but it's it won't fit now, if I change the lot and just get you know make thirty thousand square feet, again I've got enough frontage, I would have enough area if it all plays out. And I don't know if it's gonna play out either, Jimmy, because I don't know how much area is in here. What's the other lot gonna be? It would be it would be a, it would have to be 175 feet of frontage, 30,000 square feet. Hadley box has to fit in it. So Will both of them be on the sewer. I think the sewer's right there. This Pretty one, sure. this one, this one would be on the sewer. And the sewer in this, 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 Street, is, this is River Drive, right? No, no, that's no. Mount Warner Road. River that's Mount Warner Road. Yeah. River Drive, See, well, River Drive is over here. Okay, yeah, I'm right. sorry, I'm sorry. So so I, bet, I bet there is no sewer to this lot. I yeah. don't know how far up. There's sewer. This house, our house, is on sewer, which oh. is on Mount Warner here, and the sewer comes up to this intersection here. I think this farm is on the sewer. But how does the sewer go this way, or does it go that way? It goes that way. And it goes down French Street to yeah. 47. So. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's downhill, you could use an injector pump, and that's not a problem. If the sewer out there on French Street, I don't remember what it was. So yes, it would have sewer. So there's sewer sewer, line goes there's a hydrant there. here, and uh, all the utilities come up there. Well, just to reinforce my comment, if we were in the urban renewal business, this is the street we'd want to do it on. Well, it's not going to help the street. It's going to help this oh, the, area. The, the, the street's pretty, as I said, very shabby. There's some decrepit structures there, and you know. You were you know, you know, you know, this bylaw that was passed, or whatever was passed at town meeting, which I missed, yeah, just, you don't almost want to tear down all of the French Street, okay? We're, we're in the process. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to do with this, anyway? Um, we're trying to determine what to do with it based on this. If it's a building lot. Do you own this whole parcel now? Yes, we own everything from this house. Do you own this house? Here. Yes, yeah. they own from the pond. The mill on the pond. From the from the bridge on Mount Warner all the way to. How big is this building? Not very. It's no, Thirty feet thing. wide, and I think it's. This was an old school lot. Ninety. Uh, just feet. a tiny one. But that's an established but boundary. Yeah, right here. I mean, this. Yeah, there's the, there's an established boundary. So again, the biggest question is, is this pre-existing non-conforming? Will it? Because I can't fit the box in it, will it? 
maintain that status, or is that not? Can you put uh, the square footage in here? I don't know yet, Johnny. But if I if this if this question is answered negatively, it doesn't it doesn't matter. If it's answered positively, then I got to survey and figure it out. And if it if it works, if there's got to be enough area, I'm not going to come back and say, oh, geez, I surveyed it and I'm a ten thousand square feet short. You know, help me out. That's not how it's going to work. It's either there or it's not. So there's got to be sixty thousand square feet of land to make this fly. Yeah, but how can, we, how can we tell out a map like this where the road stops here and you got a trail running here and that's not accurate? Well, it's not about, I mean, this is, this is accurate. This is, French Street is to here and then it keeps coming. It's not about that, it's about this right here. So this, this house is non-conforming. This is non-conforming. Correct. Now, he, if he owns this, this, and this together, should we not see these boundary lines here? Well, we you will. This if, is if from we the do 1930s. This. Yeah, if we do this, you will see the boundaries. Everything. I'm not trying to say here's the survey. Give me two building lots based on this. I just have to get my question answered. So, so that's the. the, the How can you answer the question? We don't see the what's there. So what's the two boundaries? Okay. Okay. So, well, it's a, it's a it's a legal question that I'm asking. So you're also going to have a quarter acre upland on this property. Okay. Okay, by the zoning bylaw. Yeah. So that alone may be tight because assuming this is 60 feet down here, you're down to, I don't know, 30 feet? Okay. And it's 198 feet long. If you have 60 times this, you've got 12,000 square feet. Yeah, and I got I got to keep going and to get my thirty thousand. But I understand what you're saying, so that's a valid point, also. You know, this one is probably not a problem because you got. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming this is all upland. Yeah. But you know, from the top of the bank, I don't know how much from the top of the bank is is not upland. Mm-hmm. You, know, you got a. Uh, yeah, I got to get that. You got a wetlands issue as well. Not a wetland. I don't know what it's, I don't even know who's doing well, it. Rivers Act. R River, rivers, yeah. And, the, and, the, and there would be a wetland issue there as well. Um, so, I mean, that, that question has to get answered. Again, I, you, you guys, I'm not trying to pull anything over on anybody. Well, I, I'm not, nobody's accusing you. <coughs> I'm, you know, just, we're, I'm, within, just I, I'm just, I'm personally thinking that it's quite a stretch to get two buildings out of this. Yeah, and it's not like, it's so, a, it's a little hard to read these plans yeah. because they don't give they, they didn't use to calculate area. Yeah. That was right. just done for the purpose of establishing the boundaries. I understand. Lot, so. and all, all I'm saying is since French Street runs over to here, because it kind of makes a, 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 turn, a turn here. Yeah. That I'm just saying that it's it's going to be a stretch to say this is two lots. There's no consideration, Jimmy, because they own this lot. No. No, that's 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 great. Great. no. I think it makes it even more difficult because this is in one ownership. And is there a boundary line that has a separate deed for this parcel? Yeah. yeah. But nevertheless, he has how long, how many years has he owned it? Well, he just bought this. Just bought. He just bought this. So he's so got it's in one ownership now. five or six years to. No, yeah, but they're both developed. So that's not. Yeah, he, that's no, not. No. Isn't. Is if there's no if building on this an adjacent no. lot. Yeah, 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 adjacent lot. And this is this is part of this right now. This is all one lot. To to your right. concern, right. Jimmy. Yeah. Today, yeah. a lot of you know, ninety percent of the time, it, it becomes a numbers game for me. Whether it's you know open space or parking, whatever, I have to make sure that I've got the sixty thousand square feet there, the quarter acre of upland, all that. I, I have to I have to meet all those criteria. I just need to know if this is pre-existing and it stays that way. If I if I cut it cut it into yeah. two. I mean, there's no doubt that pre-existing non-conforming. Nobody's going to disagree one bit with that. But to say if pre-existing non-conforming can make it two lots, I I personally don't see that. Because you are making this lot more non-conforming. Well, the the, as long as I keep 30,000 square feet in it, 
then I conform to the Bible. You're, 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 right? you're talking one thirty thousand square feet, but you don't have all the parameters necessary. You certainly have the front inch, you have the thirty thousand square feet. Right. But uh, there's how many cars how many cars drive down Front Street each day? Five? <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's, that's not the issue. I'm, yeah, but right. I'm just trying to point something out. It's, you know, it's, 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 really, it's really a unique, it's, it's, unique it's, it's, little the, place. The whole, I mean, whether it's a hundred uh, cars or one car, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a town road. It goes by the same bylaws yeah. as anything else. Do you have any idea of how many square feet is all this land? I have not, none, Johnny. No. Right now. I have none. But to, to yeah. Joe, your, your question, I'm not making this area over here less conforming than it is now. The only thing I would change would be the area of the lot and it would have to be 30,000 square feet in order to comply with what I can make comply. I can't <coughs> add land to the back where the house is, but I, I cannot make the lot less than 30,000 square feet and I'm not asking for that. So that's going to just determine how far over the boundary line is going to go. And it may get to the point where there's not enough land there to do two lots. That would, remains to be seen. But I just, again, I just have to understand. Well, if there were any way to work with you, I'd be in favor of working with you. <coughs> like I said. <coughs> yeah. I wouldn't have no problem with that either, Randy. But you, you got to... You got to show us more than oh yeah this no yeah. question you know no question and, and the it. only way you can determine that is you survey that and if you end up with that thirty thousand square mm -hmm. foot yeah I'm not asking you tonight to approve two lots I'm just asking about this one issue I'm trying well, to well if you if you get us to say affirmative on that one issue in effect. You must have an idea. I don't. I do not, Joe. I <coughs> truly don't. What I don't like to do is spend my client's money before I know <coughs> I got a, a fighting chance to get something for them. So if I thought this was, if I knew there were 40,000 square feet there, I'd tell them it's not going to work. I'm not going to take your money and, uh, to tell you that it's, it can't work. So that's why I'm here, just to make sure that and we're all talking the same language. And if it makes sense to move forward, I will. If it doesn't, I won't. So you know, one, rather than spending a lot of time spinning wheels, one simple thing I like is just look at what the assessors show for the square footage for this, which will not be perfect, but... Uh, well, they're going to show across the street. No, that's oh. a separate tax. That's part. a separate tax. Yeah. It is. What is that? That's the assessors? Oh, this is... This the assessors' is, map. This is the assessors' map, lot 42. Are you going to get you access? Yeah. Uh, Any idea why they named it French Street? Because it used to be called Montreal Street. Really? What was it called? Montreal Street. Oh. Montreal. Uh huh. Lucky Pierre Street. Got a history lesson tonight. I thought it was because Art LaSalle named it. Leave that one end of it. Huh. And I guess maybe what I ought to do is go talk to the zoning enforcement officer to see what he thinks about this because I can bring a plan to you guys and you can you sign it, but that doesn't make it so a this, legitimate lot. This is parcel 42, and that's the house. Yep. Got some barns. Yep. This is parcel 41, which is the schoolhouse lot. Which one is parcel? <coughs> and parcel 40 is. The is the their existing house lot and, and barn. So let's see what we can do with that one. They're showing it is 1.57 acres for that. Mm -hmm. For this? For this. Yes. For this parcel on this side of French Street, from which there to there. Which would be six, which is just over 60,000 square feet. Uh, 1.5 is, yeah, it's, yeah, you're right. So it's going to be close, for sure. 
No, no question about it. How close is the house to the road? Right, right there. This, this is accurate. A couple of feet, from, from maybe. You. Yeah. You can, you can walk out the, step off the well, front porch and get hit by a car. I mean, there's no doubt the house is is permitted. I mean, it's been right. be prior to zoning, so nobody, there's not going to question that. Were there any other houses there that you know of on oh, that, on that lot? Thank you. Uh, I don't think there was ever any. No, there's no old foundations or anything? What is the stand now? Only on the uh, small when I, get, when I get the letters, piece when I get the thing under the pressure of the two old uh, uh, Let me talk to the uh, building see what he says yeah. at one time. Because it is, so it is a zoning yeah. thing. It's like a cellar it's, it's not, it's you don't not know really, that, I do. I, mean, I, I wanted to there see what you guys had to here? say. Yeah. There was a house there. So this yes. other parcel here, Mark, the 30 Mark foot Nowski, strip. I think, or something like that. I've heard all kinds of different stories sort of, about it. But. So, but so, you know, there's, 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 a, there's an old cellar hole on this property. Uh, no, they just bought that part separately up there. But how long ago? Same transaction. Oh, okay. I, you know, I, just, I just asked this gentleman. So, there's an old cellar hole on this property. Yeah. There was a house there at one point. So that's another 5,000 square feet on the school the schoolhouse lot. Okay. Okay. Although it's there not, was a house on that building? Yeah. This was called a schoolhouse lot, although it's not shown accurately, so it's probably less than 5,000. This shows it going all the way back to the river. Oh, if there were a house but there, I think this was not. No, 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 not true. No. no if, if the lot, if the schoolhouse was on this lot, he may stand a chance. If the schoolhouse was on this lot, because it's less than 5,000 square feet, yeah. there is no grandfather. Okay. Right. It's a technicality, but. <laughs> but, so. Two, two years, so. So no, you, you not unless that. unless you merge the two properties. So you do have you do have a little extra space that you might be able in to theory do. we do theory. based on the assessors which we know is not necessarily accurate. Not for use in conveyancing. Yeah. So anyhow, all right. I will ask a couple more questions, and if it seems to. Jim, what if, what if what if he merged these two properties and just changed it completely, and so now the old cellar hole is on his property? Yeah, but it was, it was a, not a dwelling. It was a, it was a school. That's what they call the schoolhouse lot. Well, it, it, it you know the the old fire station on it on on, on uh, West Street. You, 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 you get into you get into some you very. I know. I'm just pointing some things out. You yeah, get into some very that. complicated. Uh, they're, they're very involved. Chapter forty a definitions when you right. start trying to con con concern that because of the law the law gets pretty okay. involved okay. just thinking out loud that's all is, no, is there any sure. opportunity for them to go instead of coming back here to go to the dba let me talk to tim first see what he says and if if he says that's because to me it's just a question of what do we lose if do we lose that grandfathering of the lot depth if we alter this and, and turn it into a, a second lot just so you know, just just across the river they just rebuilt mr uh, what was his name the old the yellow house there that they tore down they rebuilt it it's about this far from the from the road yeah yeah they got a very you know, well, they, so that was pretty existing yeah this is kind of yeah but this is kind of yeah, this is kind of the you know, kind of the would not allow oh, that how oh, they no. ever got a variance i don't think they're in the flood zone it's not in the flood zone they're up high enough that they're not uh, yeah, they're, uh, yep. they're not there. Uh, if they, they flood, are. boy, this town's in big trouble. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a good drop. It's 25 feet down to the river. Right. Anyhow. Randy did the work and got a uh, waiver for another parcel on uh, French Street. Yeah, that's so. that's lower than that house. So it's it's all way up above the flood elevation there. So anyhow, all right. I'll get some questions answered, and if, if it's appropriate, I'll be back on this one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Joe. Hey guys. Thanks for having me back. Uh, so recently, uh, as you guys were aware, we met with the zoning board and we granted the variance with some stipulations that weren't allowed to be stipulations that uh, you guys will be enforcing. But, uh, so I'm here now to talk about what's next. Okay. You, you apply for site plan approval on it, right? I'm sorry? We have site plan approval on this property, I right? believe so. Yes, okay. Yeah. Sure, but he's review. Um, C. Lewis Subaru was granted a variance 
on parking not on the property, basically. Is that right, correct? So the variance they gave us was because of the no more than five unregistered cars, because of the app. We ran into an issue. Right, that's that right. Before, yeah. It's because of the five unregistered cars. Yeah. In a variance, they're not allowed to put conditions on it. Steve Lewis Subaru was willing to go along with the conditions that were suggested and the ZBA remembered that a variance cannot have conditions. It's either yes or no and there's no in between. Special permits can have conditions. One of the conditions that were requested was that he, the Steve Lewis Subaru um, is basically going to be parking on non-black top area. Non going to be parking on uh, not impervious area, not impervious grounds. Yes. With their all new vehicle, the chances of leaking are extremely low. Never say never. And they admit to the same thing. The suggestion was that once a year or twice a year, whatever would be appropriate, I think once a year would be good, would be to go out there. They actually get an engineering firm they can actually do a hydrocarbon sniff of the soil, which basically going to tell you is there oil leaking or not. And Steve Lewis Subaru was fine with that. That was a condition that they said, no, we can't do that. But the ZBA says, can you do that as part of your planning board approval of the property? And I said, that's a good idea. So one of the because we haven't approved it yet, pending this outcome. One of the conditions that I suggest we put in there is that once a year, every year, as long as they're parking on that property, they move the cars, do the hydrocarbon sniff, you find nothing, you're fine. You find something, you got to address it. Would it be able to sniff oil that was dumped there 40 years ago? So to address that, uh, Mike, we, we, we had said the same thing. We said, geez, we don't want to agree to something a year from now. Yeah we're held viable for something that's pretty it's existing. So what we would do Baseline. is we would we would test it now. So to find out. Sniff yeah. it now before they park the cars. Yeah. That there way was, there was a time where yeah. there was some large construction equipment that was parked yeah. there. Yeah. So, and there was farming on Yeah, yeah and it was a swan, I forget the name of the company. What, that's that's what what I, I don't I don't yeah. know how it, it it depends a lot how much was leaked. Right. I mean a couple of drops it probably wouldn't find it a couple of drops really isn't the concern. Right. Okay, we're well, worried about you know a, a leak. Sure. And you know the good thing, luckily, the cars only hold yeah, it only four, four so or five much, quarts. Yeah. They're not holding yeah. massive amounts of oil, but nevertheless, right. leaking oil is not good no matter what. Right. And so Steve Wu Subaru was fine with that condition. Like you said, he would he want to sniff it before he parks the car right. so that he's not correcting something that he didn't do. Right. And that's fine. And, okay. and from my own memory, the the, the construction equipment that was most recently parked there. Was parked closest to the road, Correct. so where we would test would be in the back where we are, where we would be utilizing that space as okay. well. Okay. So the other question is looking for some guidance on whether we want what we want for screening, if anything. Well, my comment on that, I've been watching that. The screening, as far as I was concerned, is to stop people from stopping there and looking. And I, I, walk, I go by that every day, and I haven't seen a car there. So I would retract my request to put a screen in there because if it does get out of hand, then you're we'll, going to be we'll called back in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, I, I agree with interesting comment on that. I do a lot of traveling. I'm a part-time delivery driver for oh, okay. parts. Yeah. And I travel all over from Amsterdam, New York to upstate New York, I mean to upstate Vermont, to Connecticut, there was a place I was just at in Amsterdam, New York, where it was a used, I mean a car dealer, not unlike you, parking their cars on somebody else's lot. And all of the cars were not facing the road. <laughs> and I saw, saw that immediately. My wife was, she said, look at that. She says the cars are, are facing away, just like right. Subaru. Yeah. And to your point, hardly anybody, there was nobody there. Right. Because it's not doesn't look like the wrong display. Yeah, that was a. But before yeah, that, I've seen yeah. <laughs> when, when, when you were here yeah. and I asked you to turn those cars yeah. around. Yeah. Before that, I would see people stop there. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it was more inviting. Yeah. Yeah, right. and, and, and it was. It's a simple thing, but it, one is like I'm on display. One is 
And of course, you don't want the customers there. You want them in your right. yard. Yeah, don't help me at all. <laughs> they don't do you any good. Can't sell them on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, I think that was a really good idea. Yeah. I think it's working. And to that point, if it's working, leave it alone. Okay, I appreciate that. And for what it's worth, I went down and tested it. We brought a car closer towards the road, and we put up. You know, we were holding up a, a, a basically a thing with the measurement. We would have had to build like a jail wall to uh, to, to shield it because of the slope of the property. Oh, okay. So it would have been obnoxious in order to make it actually where it would actually serve a purpose, other than just you know. Well, I think you had them dis so. displayed or parked, not displayed, but yeah. parked here long enough to go to a test that would involve people coming out and looking yeah. and and that. I go by there every day, every morning I go be, downstairs. Because, be, right. because I drive by this by that almost every day, you guys got a huge turnover on those cars. I'm yeah. amazed when I yeah. go by there in a week, it's like, those are all different. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had to put cars there a few weeks ago just so, you know, just, just so I wouldn't make the landlord, land, you know, the landlord think we're giving up on it. You know, we actually, we, we got down to next to nothing. And the next few months, actually, Subaru's really tightening up their allocation. So you're going to see that lot. It's going to be pretty bare for a little bit here but uh, but I know what happens in the fall when the new model year start to pump they're gonna pump us you know pump us full again, I mean, so. this is good and that's good for you yep now sure we're so. gonna wait until we publish put it we haven't approved it just to put it we haven't approved meeting. it so we can it, it was but it was continued for the ZBA so yeah. we could put it on our next put it on the next agenda yes it is it is on the next agenda for the for the June 5th to uh, to approve it and do the parking okay okay so now you Should I have that test done prior to June fifth for my own protection? Yes. In your recommendation. Do 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 it do okay. it as because we're in agreement. You're all set. Okay. And whatever mm -hmm. condition we talked about, the thing you know, like that. Yeah. So I would yeah to your point, um, I'd recommend getting it and mm -hmm. getting it tested. Okay. And there's any almost any environmental engineering firm around can do that. We don't okay. need anybody that we've approved. Okay. Okay. And we we uh, got test just to Berkshire protect. probably can do yes, that. right. Yeah. Probably Berkshire probably fit right. You yeah. find out. I'll find yeah. out. I'll, I'll, I'll but sure. get, yeah, get it done as soon as possible, but yeah. don't delay the hearing. Yeah. Like June yeah. 5th. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Thank okay. you guys. Good luck. Thank you very much. Okay. Build your pen. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay. Good luck. Scott Braidman. Hi. Hi. Hey, guys. I'm Scott Braidman with Happier Valley Comedy. So we are applying uh, for a business permit to open a nonprofit improv comedy theater at. Uh, one Mill Valley right next to the tap room in that empty spot there. So we're in lease negotiations right now. All we need to see is a sign. A sign? All we need to see is a sign. The actual design of it? Yeah, the actual, what will it be? Okay. Okay, You're, are you going to have something on the building or just on a, on a front facade or I mean? A, Both the ladder signs where the other businesses right. are. So one there and then one above the door on the parking okay. lot side. So um, just get, get whatever you get your sign designed to bring it in, we'll give it approved. We'll, I mean, we can approve you tonight, but you're, there's there's no problem. <laughs> you're not doing anything but acting. Right. Is that correct? Are you aware? Yeah. Are you aware of Hadley's vulgarity bylaw? No, I'm not. No. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, and what about um, putting up uh, sort of signage on the inside of our windows? Are there regulations on how big those can be? If it were to fill the window, is that something that we need to? That's stretching the bylaw. Yeah, that, that's stretching the bylaw. I mean, in occasional advertising, like say you're going to have a show next week, just as an example. So you put a sign inside the window, you advertise it for a couple of weeks, and then you take it down. Mm -hmm. That's okay. But to have a continual sign inside the building, inside the window, would be stretching the sign bylaw. Okay. What, what are they allowed on the building itself? For Forty them? square feet. So that's exterior or interior? Linen? 40 square foot exterior sign. So if you were to put up, okay, put, put, put the bylaw this way. Let's say you have a 10 square foot sign as your sign on the exterior. Mm -hmm. You would then theoretically, you would be allowed, I take that back, you would be allowed a 30 square foot window sign. Okay. Okay. Yeah, what we were considering is the kind of perforated vinyl that comes up so it lets light in, but you can't see in. So that would be that would have some sort of a sign type design on it. So okay. that would be limited by the square foot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Your your exterior sign. You're allowed multiple exterior sign not to exceed forty square feet. Okay. So let's say you put. Well, you can do the math. All right. So forty square feet altogether. Correct. 
Okay. You may also, before you put a window sign on the on the Russell Street side, you may want to talk with your landlord about whether they like that. Yeah, absolutely. But you're on the Russell Street side? It's well, all the windows on both. All of the spaces open, all the parking lots, open, all the spaces open onto the parking oh. lot, which is off okay. of Mill Valley Road. Okay. So. But then, okay. then, yeah, there are windows on the Russell Street side as yeah. well. So. How long have you been looking for a place? Uh, not too long, maybe three months, but we've, we've been around for a couple of years with uh -huh. the community of students and audience. So okay. excited to have our own spot. Good. Okay. And so what is the name of the business again? Happier Valley Comedy. And you're just not, I mean, just out of curiosity, what do you do? It's uh, improv classes for adults right now, but it will be for kids as well. And then we do shows and also corporate training. Okay. About comedy stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, Whose Line Is It Anyway? If you've ever seen that show, it's. Who is it? Whose Line Is It Anyway? That TV show. It's um, sort of like theater, except we get up on stage without any scripts and we make it up as we go. Oh, okay. I've been to Dangerfields in New York City. Does that count? That's. Little, little stand up, right? Yeah. 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 We'll probably end up doing a little bit of stand up, but yeah. Okay, so you can just come back to this early session, walk in session, um, when you have your signs designed. Okay. okay, perfect. When are you planning to open? We're hoping to start having classes there like at the end of June, but we're in lease negotiations now, so we'll see how the timing works out. So our next meeting is June 5th. June 5th? First okay. and third, first and third Tuesdays. Right. Okay. So, thank okay. you very much. Good luck. Thank Thanks. you, Mr. Iser. Just bring the shopping cart forward. I, I've got Mr. Rubzinski is in the audience. I, I've got a question to ask about his. He owns Easy Ride at 26 Russell Street. Yep. And I've been talking to you on and off about him using his upstairs of the new building. And we have parking. Uh, he told me we needed to go through the parking process. And I just want to, again, I'm going to ask a question. This isn't, this is a, I, got, I have a couple of copies. Let me, let me get, hand them out before I start talking about it so that everybody can see. So again, a numbers game. We have parking. I've got the table all figured out at the bottom. The biggest concern was we did this prior to him wanting to use the upstairs. He had Paul Steisbeck design a parking lot for him. So then we've come to find out we're going to need this extra area back here. It's going to be reserved parking. He's not going to need to use it. But my question is, Paul, reviewed everything and wrote a letter that says take my original design and add X to it to make this work. Is that something that the board will accept? Do we have to get this peer reviewed? What's happening with the second story? When he built the building, we got it approved for the bottom floor. Right. The top store the top floor was storage, which is what it is. Then I came back and said he's now got people interested in using that space. Randy, that's why we in. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. What are you? What are you going to use it for upstairs, Jerry? I don't need uh, office space. Office space. Yeah. Okay. We insisted that was strictly supposed to be storage, and I said this is the camel's nose in the tent. Guaranteed, he's going to come back, and he's going to want to put something up there. So we gave him permission, trusting that it was just going to be storage, and. My worst conclusion is coming true. Yes. Now you and want absolutely, the camera. Absolutely, the public hearing was this is storage yeah. only, never to be used for anything else. Uh, I don't. I know but I said it, storage. Wait, but my I don't question remember. is, whether or not, if someone has a building, they're paying taxes on that uh, building, they should be entitled to use the whole building. No. If if the site, wait a minute. If the site back then would qualify for the parking back then and qualify today, 
What the hell is the problem? Well, maybe we should hold another hearing because this is entirely a new presentation before well, us. Well, I'm just asking uh, under the current zoning. Well, Johnny, you would be upset if somebody told you they were going to do X and they did X and Y. But uh, if, I bet, I they're, not doing, it. they're not doing it under the table. They're coming out in the open okay. to the meeting. Hang on, guys. Just one sec. I'm not asking for this tonight. I'm just asking if this report would be acceptable. When I came here, it's been several months, you guys said we have to have another public hearing because you were upset then as well. And I understand what you're saying, Joe. If, if I said to you, you approved this based on the numbers previously and I can't increase my parking and I'm asking for permission to use the upper floor, then I, I would appreciate that you tell me to go pound sand. But I'm not doing that. I'm saying we're going to increase the parking, we can make all the numbers work, and I'm just asking about this engineering report. Because it's such a small site, do we have to get a peer review? And I'm, I'm not, I don't have a problem if we have to have another public hearing. I'm fine with that. Whom did you say was going to use it? All these? <laughs> office. Office. <laughs> I thought you said all these offices. I was going to have to refuse myself. So one other factor, I have noticed driving by that there have been, is it rider trucks or U-Haul? Well, or no, 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 that was a temporary, uh, someone asked me to, if they can park it there simply. What is he doing downstairs? What's, what's down there? That's where he sells his motorcycles. His motorcycles and sells them. Your new, new, new bikes? I use. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to have an office above a motorcycle? Well, he, he, well, he doesn't, uh, I don't know what, it, do you run the motorcycles in the, in the building downstairs? Do you run them? Uh, do, you have race, do you have races inside? No, down? not races, but no, no, I mean, just start them, yeah. Yeah, well, well that's, that's okay. okay. I don't. So when you when you figure out your open space and building coverage, are you counting both buildings? Uh, the building coverage, yes. In open space, yes. But, you know, I'm, I'm I'm confused. This this chart isn't making sense. What's 6844 square feet? Is that building? So let's see right here, building, 6844. So that's this. Yes. And this and this. Two stories. Right. So I've got. Oh, so this is not the one you submitted. This is a brand new. This is this a new is, one. This is a new one, including the second floor. Yes. Oh, oh, I thought this was the original one that we approved. I was like, something's not right here. No, no, this is a oh, new okay. one. Okay. Okay. Mm, so what are you saying? So you're, you're including. You're to amend the, the. You're including the dwelling in this. As for coverage space. for coverage. Oh, for coverage. Because yeah. it's got parking required. That's what I'm confused so, about. Yeah, because yeah five so automobiles where, I mean, if you're going to have office space upstairs, figure two offices, and then the tenants here, only five cars plus... The, the, the five cars that I have on there, Joe, are the ones that are for sale. That's not, uh, okay. that's not uh, use parking. So we're not talking about people that are going to be renting the space nor the tenants here? Correct. Wait a minute. No. So that's more parking than is listed. Is no, no, it's all, it's all there. It's, it's all... I got, a, I got a question on this. I'm just trying to figure sure. this out. Okay. So you you don't have 3,234.22 square feet. You don't have 6,800 square feet of building. No. You have 34.22 square feet of building. Yeah, so the parking, so this is parking required. So for the building, which is the two commercial. So those two only. Right. It doesn't include the house that you said it did include. Oh, I thought it, okay. I, I, you're right. I thought I was doing that for uh, coverage for the open space. So no, it, it, no, it is no, included. No. It, it is included in the open space calculations. Yes. It's not included in the parking because okay. this is not commercial. Okay. I, I'm not disagreeing with that. That's where you had me confused. Okay. You said I it was apologize. included. And this, I'm like, wait a minute. 
Okay, that makes different sense. Yeah. So what what I've done here, the building, the commercial building requirement for parking is that. Yes. The five motorcycles is that. The, the five cars is that for a total of that. So that's here, mm -hmm. and that's what I've, I'm showing, and that does not include this 1184 driveway. Okay. And what I try to do in this is just spell everything out what, I, so, what I'm calculating. So that, that's including this reserve parking? Yes. This parking? Yes. This, this line that you're looking at is a, a, a top, topography contour line. Okay. So just make believe it's not there. Okay, so what, this is parking, this is parking, and this is green. Correct. That's not parking today, though, in this corner, right? Right here? No, this is not. This is green. This is green. The parking is back here. Is that all parking now? <coughs> it's, no. It's so uh, it's really not quite all of it's gravel, but... This dwelling is just the repair? No, that's... that's uh, uh -huh, that's where he lives. Well, that's where he goes. And this is the. That's the motorcycle shop in the back. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll okay. Backwards. Okay. Okay. I mean. Probably. How many customers you have a day come parking in there? I'm just curious. How many cars? Customers. Customers yeah. stopping by, yeah. Uh, not too many, three, four. A day? Yeah. So, what is, you, you want us to answer a question before we hold another public hearing, or do you not want a public hearing? What's, what's your request? Well, my, my question is about... Can I see the letter? Sure. The letter from Paul Steisbeck regarding... And, and, and I have a whole packet that I didn't bring that's got all his calculations and his design for an underground leaching system similar to what he did for me at my office that I know works. Uh, and it, that's basically an addendum to it, Jimmy. He didn't want to have to go run everything all through it all over again, so he just did the little... And that has been installed? There is, it is a... No, it has not been installed. This has not been installed? The drain, there's a catch basin there that you guys approved, oh, I don't know how long ago that was. I know it, I didn't, I wasn't here. Jerry came in himself and said, I want to put a catch basin back here. He did do that, but it's not enough to, to cover the drain. So Paul's got a very complex underground, uh, the perforated, you know, big plastic pipe leach system that's going to go under the parking lot. This one? Yes. Okay. Well, is that a condition of our prior approval? No, this is something new. Again, it's this is all for this new stuff. The your prior approval was there was no drainage necessary. Jerry asked you to put that catch basin in because he felt it would improve the situation there. But again, if, if he paves it, it's not enough. To cover it. That was the leaching basin, wasn't it? I think so. Okay, so you're asking, what, what, I still... Oh, so what I'm asking, Joe, is there is a letter that I have from Paul Steisbeck. Okay, we're that's an, engineer. That's okay. an addendum to his drainage study, which I don't have tonight. Mm -hmm. You guys have not seen it yet. But again, he, he calculates everything. He designs a system, which I will bring to you, because I was of the assumption that we had to have another public hearing. I would agree with the public hearing. I... I think this is because Ezekiel. Let me back up. When he does this, is this going to be paved? Or is it going to stay like a gravel surface? It's paved. It is going to be paved. Yes, sir. Okay. The way you got this set, that meets all zoning laws. Yeah. So you're asking for. I, I, a I waiver of site plan review. No, I'm asking no. for a waiver of peer review. I mean peer on review. The drainage, right. On the drainage. On the drainage. Peer review. Yes. My bad. That's fine. I'm okay either way. What the board feels on a waiver of drainage. I have no problem with it. I don't either. I guess I don't, but I just think that is so 
you're proposing to pave right up to the property line. Yeah. Um, and again, I mean, we can we can back that off. It just, I mean, I can make that reserve because we it's it's a question of the bylaw states we have to have X amount. We don't need it. Yes. So it probably would make sense to pull it back a little bit so that there's place for snow and things of that nature. Yeah. So I mean, I'm just if it if it isn't paved today, I'm just asking you why you want to pave it. It's just a aesthetic, and oh, uh, it, it's easier to maintain the snow in the winter. Okay. Instead of pushing the, well, I don't the, know that about the, that. the yeah. rocks back and forth, it, it's uncomfortable. Okay. All right. So on June fifth. I will be back with the submission, the application, and all that because I don't have it tonight. Is, is the board okay waiving a peer review on drainage, or do you think we should have it? Um, I think it's so small you don't need it. I know Paul spent a lot of time designing the system, so. And Paul states here that this thing will work. Oh, sweet, good. And like I said, I've got the whole study. I've got the plans that show, you know, the construction details of what has to be done to build it correctly. It's 50 foot by 24. So it's basically... You got a thousand, well, eleven hundred, twelve hundred square feet. Okay, just twelve hundred square feet. How about that? My math is good. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> no, I see that after I'm sitting here trying to figure my head in my head, yeah. dummy. Um, with a twelve inch ADS. Everybody uses ADS pipe. This no wonder there's so many trucks coming in. This room. There's nobody. No, there's no wonder there's so many trucks coming into that out of that place all the time. You ever see that place? Which place? ADS in, in Ludlow. I don't know. You want to see something inside the pipe that comes out of there? I bet you. I bet you could. St you could stand up and walk through it. Really? Oh yeah, a big plastic drainage pipe. Well, I know the one that's, that's in my parking lot is two, the double twenty-four inches. So. so. Yeah, I think it's a. I mean, because the drainage is, it, it's, it's not running over here. I mean, I would pull it back a little. I wouldn't go right to the bottom of the field. Give, give a couple of feet around the edge. Yeah. Especially for snow accumulation and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what I'll do is get everything together and bring it back on the 5th so that we can set a hearing date. Thank you. Now maybe I got a couple of things that aren't so complicated. You want something really easy first? Whatever you got. This is way too much for one night. Yeah, tell me about it. All right, so. What happens if we didn't show up for about three months? Well, that's it. Oh, yeah, so deal. he's making up for it, right? That's right. Yeah. I, had a, I had a class on Tuesday night, so I couldn't come. A class? Yeah. What is it? How to take off the planning board? No. no. I don't I don't want to know how to do that. That's nobody anyway. This, there's two mylars here for some reason. I mean, there's only, you know, it, they're both the same. So this is, so this is uh, Colony uh, Drive Gelinas, okay? And the Arlovesque has done all the work. I did the original boundary survey, and they took it and ran with it and did the, the engineering and all that. But, so since I did the survey part of it, they wanted me to sign the plan. So that's what that's all about. And has the decision been given to the town clerk, Bill? Yes, and we have a certificate of no appeal. Okay, fine. And I will take it tomorrow and get it signed by Jessica. Today's date? Today is the 15th. Okay. Yes, today's day. And I'll, I'll, so I'll have her sign it where she's supposed to. What else have you got? I got an AMR. Um, 59 River Drive, which is the old Klamoski farm now owned by John Kakoski. Uh, the majority of the property is in APR. There was an exclusion of the house lot. The house lot was bigger 
than it needs to be to meet the zoning. And there's a barn that John does not want with the house. So. Oh, they put the tobacco barn behind it? This barn was part of the exclusion from the APR. He wants this out of this. For whatever reason, I don't know. He owns all around it. He is giving himself a right of way to it so that it's not landlocked. What's he doing? He's just cutting the back. Uh, let me What's the street number on this? 59. So the existing house, this whole lot, was excluded from the APR when all the whole farm was put in. This whole thing? That whole thing that you see. So right now, he does not want this barn to be with the barn in the house that's in the front. He wants to cut it out so that it's a separate entity. If he ever wants to sell this or whatever, he doesn't want to lose that barn. He wants to keep that with the farm. So that's all we're doing is cutting that out from the, the house. This, is, this won't be built on with a house or anything? No, not a separate building lot. Okay. All right. So there's no, no issue with... Uh, Wait a minute. I think there's an issue here. I got something in my eye. <laughs> well. Okay. Yikes. You all right? I got to go get one of those Cadillac operations. You should have got a Subaru operation. Oh, well, no. I don't want no Subaru. I want Cadillac. Not Rican? Yeah, well, I only got one eye, so it better be right. We got a point. You got to take care of that one. Yeah, well. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. That's okay with APR. I don't. That part is not. In the APR, the so I don't know if he's going to add, try to add that to that, and to the existing or how that works, but there's no real no concern there. You guys having fun? Anything else? I got one more thing. I got to keep you here till the time. Ah, little below it. Don't say that in front of Barry. here with me he wanted to buy it and it's uh, four lots four, four legal lots legitimate lots would fit on the property and we asked for very small subdivision stat status if we just put two in there 
Uh, we just finished the survey work. We're going to get the plans together. Hopefully, I'll, I'll submit that on the fifth as well okay. for a hearing for that one. Just want to give you a heads up. And I think that's it. Thanks for the warning. You don't Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. So, just the meeting. Is there? Is there? As we are talking about things being Perhaps. filed yeah. Larry Smith in. on June 5th, do we want to talk about um, July 3rd, Tuesday, July 3rd? Do we want to meet them? I don't think we want to meet them. Come on, fireworks in here. Yeah, yeah I'm saying that. I think, I think July 3rd could it, be Edwin told him, so he okay. could be wrong. He thinks he's still the chairman. So we'll have one meeting in July. Yeah, that should be fine. For the discussing, um, we put an invite from the American Legion on obviously the annual parade is going to be on Sunday, May 27th, starting at 2 p.m. Formation time is at 1.15 at the American Legion. And so if you are interested, in planning, anybody from the planning board is interested in, in going and marching, or anybody in the audience is interested in going and marching or watching, um, the parade will be basically from 2 until 3 p.m. And then return to the Legion at 3 p.m. approximately for uh, refreshments. What's the date Does the planning board have a staff car? Sunday, May 27th. No, we do not. Oh. He was headed to the world as a scooter. Any other, anything else for administration? Uh, I've got a couple of things just for general information. Um, oh, yes. I want to take a motion to pay before the meeting. We're talking about the Gazette bill. The Daily Hampshire Gazette has been less than efficient lately. Anywhere from people, obviously anybody who's been get, get the Daily Hampshire Gazette has probably not gotten the Gazette when you wanted it or something, or it's been very late or inconsistent. And normally when we put a legal notice in a Gazette, we get an invoice for the planning board and the ZBA gets an invoice for the ZBA. Well, this particular time they combined the ZBA and the planning board into one invoice and um, the planning board's portion of this invoice is $372.72. The ZBA's balance is close to 600. So um, rather than trying to break this out, I'm gonna give the Gazette a call and have them send out two separate revised invoices so that we can have a correct one to pay and the ZBA will address theirs as needed. Do you want a motion to pay? pay, pay I like a motion to pay 372.72 so when it does come through I can just sign it and um, so we'll get it paid. Second. Okay. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, thank you. Mr. Reedy. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm Tom Reedy, an attorney with Baker Wilson over Hayworth, here on behalf of 303 Russell Street with me this evening. Barry Roberts, the developer of 303 Russell Street. Um, just to refresh your memory, we were here last month uh, to discuss the redevelopment of the site. This is the Keats Lumber site. Um, a couple of the outstanding items were to go in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals to have a discussion about the variance for the signs. Uh, thankfully, a couple of the planning board members showed up. We were successful in receiving that variance. Um, we were also in front of the Conservation Commission last week um, and got pretty positive feedback from them. We had a site visit with them uh, April 19th, had a peer review done by Bill Shaheen, who I think analytical engineering out of Granby, um, got a clean letter. And so we are scheduled for approval from what I would anticipate being approval from the Conservation Commission next Wednesday evening, They're holding a special meeting to get us the approval so that Barry can get on the site, uh, start to push dirt around, clean up the hazardous materials, et cetera, and really get this redevelopment um, going even further than it's already been. 
So from you this evening, we're requesting the special permits that we had identified. Um, also in the interim between the meetings, we had done a little redesign. I'll point out a couple of the things. We've increased the green space, so there were three parking spaces here. We've eliminated those parking spaces and increased the buffer around this wetland. We've also taken away a little bit more of the wetland because that's where some of the hazardous material was. So we have increased um, the wetland that is being filled. And like I said, we've also increased the green space. But we're also proposing along this westerly edge, uh, probably about six inches into the peace stone diaphragm, which is two inches, either a guide rail or a split rail fence along that edge to make sure that plows don't go and, and disrupt the um, that the piece zone that's functioning um, for the, as a stormwater treatment. And we've also redesigned the, the building, at least the outside of it. You may remember it was just a blue box. Uh, we had proposed internally illuminated signs. So this is the result of your comments and also in front of the... This is the Harbor Freight This building. is the Harbor Freight Building, yes. Yeah, so this is the one on the front part of the site, the 15,763 square foot building. This is, that's a nice looking Yeah, uh, John Kuhn did a very nice job, we think. Uh, with Barry's help, you know, you've got the full windows there. Um, this is a 89 square foot sign. Uh, this is, a, I think, a 38 square foot sign. I've got those. What is that? That face is Route 9 right there? Yeah, this is the north face, so that bigger sign is on this face right there, and then the smaller sign is right here above the entry, so orient you. This is on the west facing the stream. This is on the north facing Route 9. Um, and I asked, and the, and the trees that are shown are what's proposed in the plan, so this is hopefully what it will look like. What's the material for the building? Clapboards. Pardon? Clapboards. Oh, okay. So that's Route 9, or really? Yeah. yeah. Just so that just, I, just, I figured that's what it was, but it didn't look <laughs> like that way. Yeah. Just just for the board's information, at the, at the uh, ZBA hearing, <coughs> the variance was for 264, two, 264 square foot signs or 128 square feet. And Barry and Tom mentioned that, you know, to, to get rid of the internal illuminated sign, that the front sign would probably be larger than 64 and the other sign smaller than 64 because of the facing of the signs and the ZBA said that's fine and they asked me and I quickly said I doubt the planning board is going to have an issue with that just so you'll know where the larger sign versus the and smaller sign came about. So this one, the larger one that um, Jim mentioned is 89.22 square feet, externally illuminated gooseneck downcast lighting. And then this one here is 38.53 square feet. So the billboard is still coming down? It will. Yeah, and, and I misspoke last time. Um, it'll be nine more years. It's 2027, just based on the lease that was signed. And, and again, if we can get out of it, we'll, we'll get out of it. Um, yeah, that's but we'll be we're, we will be patient. We've been sitting there forever, and <laughs> we can live in nine more years. Let me show you. I got a question. Sure. Where are they going? You're putting a fence on the brookside. Yes. Where the heck are they going to put all the snow? So none of the snow is going to be pushed down here, just because that um, is too close to the wetlands and the stream. And there's there's maybe a little snow storage here, but I don't think so. I think a lot of the snow is going to be pushed around here. These are actually mounds. They're not depressions. They're my mounds, question so. is, wherever you put it, if there's uh, salt in it, everything's going to flow to the stream. Yeah. So How do you we'll, stop that? So you don't. And I think what we do is um, we're going to use environmentally responsible de-icer, I think is what the term is. And we're, we're, that's, part of, that's going to be part of the order of conditions from the Conservation Commission is to make sure because we're sensitive to this. They already talked about that. Yeah. 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 Because that was even, something. Even on a state low through nine with it. <laughs> exactly. It's okay for them to. Yeah. Well, through, through. But it's <laughs> not okay for Qu Qu Question on the parking. Sure. You've got about 130 parking spaces. Uh yes. Give or take one. Yes. Yes. That's fine. Do you really think you need all that many? Depends who you ask. Yes. Uh, really? Harbor Freight. Yes. This is the least cost. No, no, I'm just asking the yes. That's all. Okay. Yes. Yes. I've got a I've got a different reason for asking that. It's nothing to do with you. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's what they yes. That's what they require. Okay. And we do meet 
the town of Hadley parking regulations right. yeah. to the one and also the open space and everything yes. else. Yes. And I can get to Bill, this is I had sent to you some other plans. This is updated showing the guide rail, but what I would just ask for is the guide rail slash split rail fence. We just actually talked about it earlier tonight. So that depending on what conservation wants, I think we'd like the aesthetics of the split rail. We just want to make sure functionally for what they're looking for, it works as well. Did the conservation commission allow you to clean the brook? Great question. Um, somewhat. So I had met with so far around, right? Yeah, so I had met with yeah, so I met with DOT regarding this piece here because if you've ever if you've seen those box culvert, one of them's totally silted. I guess on the northerly side of Russell Street. Um, it takes a ninety degree turn, which is um, not very efficient as far as routing that water through. So as far as these are concerned, what we understand, so I took a look at the plans in the 25% stage for what's happening here on Russell Street. Those plans showed this being the head wall being widened 17 feet. So going 17 more feet into the property than it currently exists. Um, we let them know because they have that drainage easement. We let them know that it's all silted up. Are we'll they putting a sidewalk on that side? So the proposal was, yes, a five-foot sidewalk and a five-foot maybe multi-purpose bike path with a two-foot piece of you know, concrete berm in between. You bike I know. I know. That's why I said. <laughs> so for our purposes, what we said is let's just plan on it being widened, whether they put a you know, sidewalk there or they widen the middle, as uh, Mr. Dwyer had mentioned before. Let's just plan on it. So we have actually designed the turning radii and everything internal to the site. If they were to take it, we'd still be fine to make sure all the trucks can circulate. Um, but the second piece of it, John, is that back here, they're actually letting us go in. So we're not going to get into the waterway, but we're going to be able to all those trees that are felled there and some that need to come down, all of the, uh, the bittersweet and those other invasive species, we're going to be able to go in and actually pull them out just to clean that all up. Um, but we're not going to get into where the stream actually flows. The stream bed. Yeah, they wanted, so we had mentioned it, and they said they, they don't want some, you know, super highway of water going down. They wanted it to actually meander and to have some eddies and to flow more naturally. And, you know, we're trying to do, we're trying to get this approved. So if that's what they said. Yeah, I think it's get rid of a lot of that's a junk. Yeah. It'll make a huge yeah, absolutely. So well, that's, I did talk with Jazz Kangas about not Janice Stone. King, Janice Stone about that <clears throat> and this it really doesn't make a lot of sense this is called a perennial stream at this location it goes under the bike path it goes into Allard Farms drainage ditches and those are straight as arrows and that's okay because there's an agricultural exemption and I think it's probably agricultural on the other side so this this you know what, how deep is this? 300, 400 feet? Yeah. This is the only perennial stream part of the waterway. You need to plant some uh, corn or something. How do you say the agricultural? How do you say on the north side of Route 9 is agricultural? I never see anybody farm that at all. I think, I thought that came well, out that's of... That's just like a well, swamp in there. Okay, well, I don't know where it comes from. I thought that was part of the buffalo farm, but... No. Okay, whether it is or it isn't, the fact is that this same waterway is considered a drainage ditch on the other side of the bike path, and there are no constraints on how straight it is. And Mark Stinson's comments, you know, he's the guy from DEP, the circuit rider. Mother Nature is not clean. Messy. Mother Nature is messy, he says to me. So that's what he means by trees falling down or whatever. No. What about the rails building? Oh, that sure. That? Great. Um, oh, so okay. the second piece of it, we heard that it might have looked like a banana factory. So we went back and <laughs> banana toned down, toned down the, the colors of that. So you'll that's, see it. That's much better I think than it, yeah. what's there before. I think it, I agree. I think I've got the other one if you want to refresh your memory. But no, so this, okay. is, I don't see that this is this is what we're <laughs> proposing. This is going to be the side facing the bike path. This is the side facing the west. This is the side facing the south, but as you'll recall, you've got the harbor. Whoa, 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 whoa. You just said side facing the bike path. Back up. The bay bike path is the south side. That's south. You're right. I'm wrong. South side, north side. Thank you. Oh, so the north side is going to be, oh, the, the, the side facing. 
Harbor Freight is going to be kind of blank. Correct. Yes. Okay. That's where they get their delivery. Right. So this is that. Okay. Careful. I can lose it. Got a little warped over there. Looks like it. Yeah, there's a much sturdy one in the back. This is the challenge. Mine. I appreciate that, the challenge. The solid one, heck, you mine. <laughs> but that's okay. As long as it works. Okay. What is the entry to the, from the west? The entry for rails? Yeah. Uh, yes, it's over in this corner right here, so the southwest. Right over here. Where are you going to? I'm, okay. Keep going. I think, that, I think that's all I've got for you. The, could you go back to the site plan? Sure. Are you actually going to have a, a path going to the bike path? It's not the no. no. There are actually, there's an intermittent stream oh. that goes along the bike path. <laughs> I saw they, they pipe that. I've never seen any water in it, but it's an intermittent Yeah, so they, they pipe. From, there's a, as I understand it, there's a big detention in stormwater infrastructure underneath Steve Lewis's parking lot when they expanded. That is piped along here and discharges about right here into the stream. A little beyond that to the south, you know, right where that rail trail comes down, there's just a little. That little tiny. That little tiny. Equipment? Yep. If you Intermittent the stream. Down. So, you know. All right. I mean, full disclosure. Full, full disclosure. At some point in the future, will may they? They may. Um, but for right now, it's let's get this. Let's get Barry out there, cleaning it up, building, and then if they want to cross that stream when they get to it, they no. If they want to go across, they'll just run across it. But if it's open, they'll just drive their bikes over there. They'll make their own path. Yeah. Well, that's not. John, John, the theory with having a front entrance to rails is that most people will be coming here, right. driving this way, you know? That's why they... All oh, around the detention pond. Yeah. You know, where it's, people come off Route 9 if they're not what going to... What are you going to have? Directional signs there for them to... Inside the... Yeah. Just to say, you know, down in here we'll have something that will just say rails. Yeah. You know. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, let's reject this. Okay. Lighting. Say no. <laughs> Lighting. Sure, and it should be in the packet downcast. Um, I can show you on this plan, it's a little bit smaller. What we're proposing, these red dots are the downcast lights, and then there are, on the Harbor Freight Building, you'll see the, the wall packs. Here, 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 all downcast wall packs. Any lighting on the roof line of uh, Harbor Freight? Just these. Just that, but He's no over the string of lights. Uh, you want those blanket things, right? You, <laughs> the chasers? <laughs> we don't ask. Uh, what about Christmas they show lights? Up. What about for Christmas? Multicolored, sure. <clears throat> don't take uh, height, height of some, uh, lights. Um, You're not asking for a waiver. No, we're not. I don't know that off the top of my head. I thought it was 16 feet. We talked about that. Then you would need a waiver. 14 feet. Whatever is not going to require a waiver. I think Absolutely. you said you were you were below the 15. I we think. are. Yes. Is this is a plan. Yeah. Yeah. This is those things are. Okay. okay. Yep. 14. Sounds about right. Downcast shoebox type lighting. Yeah. So those front front uh, there's two lights out in the front there. They're not going to be shining on the road at all. No, we don't anticipate that they will. I think they'll just illuminate the access way. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. So in part of this, we do have to go through DOT for an access. Even though it's through curved cost currently, we still have to go through DOT for access. So they're going to take a look at if they have any problems with the proximity of the light to the right of way. I'm sure we'll hear about it. So what are we going to use as a plan date for? We've got 
So there are some different revision dates on this plan. Okay. Um, so that's the one. That's you, the plan. Yes. Is this the one you sent me, or the one that is updated the since? Uh, yes, that's the okay. next one with the guide rail slash. And will this be updated again? I don't think so. Only in so far as the split rail guide rail piece. That's the location of where that fence will be is set. Uh, and I can send it to you in PDF as well. Okay. Um, but what what it will actually be, and it kind of came to light mm -hmm. 10 minutes before we came on here. So the, plant, the planting plan for is in there? It's not in what I, the date is correct, but that only is the civil plans. Um, what we had provided initially is okay. the, it's, it's the planting plan. So it looks like most recently revised May 11. Is the rest of the board still comfortable with the uh, lack of a, uh, a bond? Do you want to leave that up to the billing inspector? Well, I don't have no problem okay. with the guy building it. I agree. If that was him. <laughs> so we're Million gonna, dollar bond. So we're going to go with the uh, most recently revised May 11, 18 with addition of split rail fence along westerly property along westerly wide, edge, of westerly pavement. edge of pavement. Yeah. And my only thought it would be it may be guide rail or it may be split rail that's subject to the conservation commission. Now, are they the ones that we require you to put a fence there? Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. They suggested it just because they thought without any, and I think they're right, without anything there, you've got the two feet of those piece stones. Somebody's driving a plow and they, you know, it's yeah. just going to and you then get stuck on yeah. that. Okay. So could we review what waivers we were? Right here. Site plan approval, business use and aquifer, Erosion and sediment control, lot width, vehicular access across yeah. front line. Okay, and then, and then that's, those are the list of waivers. Is ha uh, Harbor Freight going to have any uh, hazardous material inside there yet? Um, Chemicals or anything? We had provided a list of what they have. It's household use, essentially, in higher quantities, but household only things for household use. They have, they have no. Not, they don't have any qualification as a hazardous waste generator. Correct. And I think you've got a letter from SWCA to that effect. Yes. Okay, so there are requested waivers to four sections of Section 8. Um, and let's just go. So I'm going to make this sort of a consolidated okay, for the discussion. Yeah, one. I'm going to make this a consolidated motion since you're actually asking for a bunch of uh, special permits in here. Um, so we approve your application for a site plan approval special permit and for um, business use and aquifer. Yeah. Business use uh, erosion. Well, that's going to be separate because that's not a special permit. Lot, lot width and vehicular access. Um, Project satisfies general purposes. Project is in harmony with the various special permit bylaws, not detrimental to future use. Uh, work will be uh, in compliance with the site plans as most recently revised May 11th, 18, with the addition of a fence along the westerly edge of pavement. I'm asking for four waivers of section 8.8. .8. That will be noted. Uh, plans have been distributed uh, uh, as required. Design features are an integral part, and it's going to be Harbor Freight. And uh, retail and Rouse Coffee Roasting. 
uh, sign detail with variance. Uh, as shown with variance. Uh, the landscaping maintained, outdoor lighting uh, shielded, no storage trailers. Uh, approval of other boards, if and as required, including the Conservation Commission, the Sewer Commission, the Water Commissioner, state agencies. Any changes directed by them must be approved by us. And um, review for compliance by an independent consultant. Um, and then we also want to, actually, I'm going to make it part of the signage section uh, billboard. The applicant agrees to remove billboard at expiration of lease. Approximately 2027, want to put a month on it? Say 12, 12, 12. Once it yeah, if we put the end of the year, that would be 12027. Expiration of lease. Well, let's see, so put it down so they know we thought about it. February 1st, it looks like. 2027. Okay, so we'll uh, make it. Okay, 2 1 2027. Approximately. Okay. Okay. And then we will also uh, satisfy the requirements of the Aquifer Protection District Special Permit. Erosion um, control. We'll also do. Uh, we'll also do in there a lot with. That was done with a finding from the ZBA. And we'll just ratify it. That's right, ZBA. And um, uh, and vehicular access. We're doing that because you don't have enough frontage here. Yes. So reading your bylaw. Okay. Literally. Okay. So uh, that um, is uh, granted to arouse in Harper Freight. Um, and that we uh, make a finding that uh, the proposals are consistent with bylaw. And um, that they are uh, unique to this particular tenant. Hey Tom, what is, what is the town gonna get in the uh, tax for this project, this whole project? You said something before. Yeah, I think, um, so the existing assessed value is 488,000, and so that's $5,895. $5, um, the proposal, we're just assuming based on 220 Russell Street, 1.5 million. And so the town will get eighteen thousand one hundred and twenty dollars, so nearly triple what it's currently getting. And so probably the triple is what to focus on. Um, I mean, it may even be assessed at more. <laughs> very, very close. Though. Yeah, I know, I know. And Bill, just for the rails, not only roasting, but it's the wholesale and retail okay. sales of that. Please and thank you. That's still reasonable. Did they tell you how many employees they're going to have to run that harbor freight? Oh, boy. I've got it somewhere. I'd have to look. They yeah, had 18 up to 30, I think you mentioned. Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay, so I'm formally making a motion, as outlined, to approve site plan approval, business use in the aquifer, vehicular access, and uh, lot width deviation, as I just read. That's the motion. Motion made. Do we have a second? Second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, and then erosion, sediment control. Um, for, um, this is not a special permit. This is a permit. Um, um, we approve your uh, application um, upon the following terms. Um, provisions of the erosion sediment control are applicable to this project. Project is not exempt. Site work is consistent with the project. Site work satisfies the performance standards and meets the design standards. That's the motion. motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Dr. Great Memory, yeah, 30 employees for Harbor Freight, eight for rails, um, and the 30 for Harbor Freight is between part-time and full-time. They said four to five employees on site for Harbor Freight at any given time. So is this for me or is that yeah. yours? Okay. Sure. And I'll get you the full set with the landscape plans and everything, including these elevations, so you can okay. have okay. it all. Perfect. Oh, yes. Very good. Thank you very good luck. Yeah. One of the things we got to do is we got to reorganize the planning board. Barry, you want? You're on the Okay, thank you. Jimmy's got his, Bill's got his, so I also have a problem. Do we have any nominations for the board? Jim Will and the board have yeah. the same. Officers, as we previously had, Mr. Maximus as the chairman and Bill Dwyer as the clerk. And all other positions. And all the other positions. Kind of like planning commission. And, uh, CPA. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. The motion is to move the slate. Good luck. Yeah. Second. second. Motion and a second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. The, uh, at the town meeting, I asked Joel Bard about the housing trust fund. And he says, yeah, that's a complicated animal. He says, but the statute the state did it. He says, you can deviate a little bit from it, but he says, you really can't do it any other way. And so of course we eliminated the housing trust fund, trust fund wording, wording and stuff and such. And so I told him what we'd like to do is simply have a fund we could put money into we could withdraw the money with town meeting approval and spend it on appropriate affordable housing issues. I says, how can we do that? He says, create a housing stabilization fund. Just like you have a stabilization fund for capital, you have a stabilization fund for this. He says, town meeting votes to put the money in, the project qualifies, the town meeting votes to take it out and spend it. Yeah, but well, what's the vote to take it out of a stabilization Two thirds. Two thirds? Two thirds. And he says, you know, you can set conditions on what the stabilization fund is. I says, I thought that was a really cool idea. It does what we want without a lot of complications, and we, within reason, can set the terms of it. But then we, we see what happens when town meeting has the power that it has, and they could pack the vote. And, amend it and, and do something that perhaps wasn't the original intention or or, or well, it well th th that a lot of, I, I can't I can't falling. disagree that yeah. it could backfire yeah. but it's very simple and that the money is in a fund it gains interest sure. when you need it you can take it out yeah Neither, I agree, I agree with that. There, there's that's the good part of it however you do get into the thing of NIMBY, not in my backyard. Oh, absolutely. Every, it all sounds beautiful. You're absolutely right, Jim. So that's, that's the big gutcha on this. Now, again, we're not, I don't think we're talking mega development. We're probably talking of something like a couple of houses, if that, in, yeah. in most cases. Yeah. You know, you know, the, the, the town's in good condition, so we're not worried about somebody running in and doing this. But it would be nice to have the money. Say we got, I mean, we're we're going to have potentially a half a million dollars in there pretty pretty quickly. That could go a long way to helping somebody turn North Hadley Hall into senior housing. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. You know, something like that. So, I mean, 
I'm not asking us to do anything tonight. Yeah. I just brought the idea up. Think about it. Think about conditions we could put on it so that when we, if and when we do create this, if we think it does have enough benefit, we put the we put the first design on what is the affordable housing stabilization fund, or whatever you want to call it, something along those lines. Yeah. And then the planning board, I'm assuming, probably with the board of selectmen, is probably going to be the one. Well, that would be the thing. Who's Who that track? The, 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 the treasurer. There's going to be a stabilization fund. No, the track it for, you know, how you have to report the number of... There's houses. no reporting. Well, how are we going to get credit for the housing? Oh, that's up to the developer. That's where we're go who's going to do the development. That's okay. The development's going to own, there's going to own the tracking of the affordable units. The town only needs to track the fund like we do any other stabilization fund. Did you ask them if there's any other towns in Massachusetts that have that? No, I didn't. I didn't get into that. I was I was just thinking about this. I said, let's, let's bring it up to the planning board, see what you think before we get into too much out of the questions. Really, we, they would still have to come before the planning board for site plan review. Absolutely. Anything, which brings me to our next thing. At the, at the same town meeting that you were at, Bard talked about the uh, selectmen being the executive branch of yes. government. And the members, the, the people that were attending town meeting, the legislature. Yes. And you know that what that makes us, Supreme Court. And I just want to throw that out. Just because something is passed the town meeting doesn't make necessarily make it a go. Oh, absolutely. We, we, are the fi we are the final say, and we are the Supreme Court in town. I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. That's <laughs> un unfortunately. You can call me John Martin. You can call me John Martin. We are the, you We're, know, when, when John Devine used to be making legal pronunciations, I would take out one of my business cards and cross my name off well, and write his name in. You did it to Jim as well, right. too. I took, a, I took a course in constitutional law and I thought that that right. meant, but for Merle or the Pearl Latham. I have one, one question uh, for Jim, Bill, or anybody on the board regarding the CBC. In my interpretation, to try to put this in simplistic terms, they're asking, acting as realtors, they get a certain percentage of the sale, and they get a certain percentage, only that real estate transaction percentage goes on every year for tracking it, doesn't it? No. Well, they said that they, they get, get a fee for that. They, they said they get 6% correct, like, to do the initial, to your point, marketing. And I think they said they get... Like a realtor. Like okay. a realtor. Yeah. And I think they said they get maybe 1% if they have to track it, if they opt for having them tracking it. Yeah, what do you mean, if it's resold? Well, well, well I think they were talking about if, if there were apartments. Right where that you need to recertify the eligibility each year. Right. And, and also, too, there's the same income tax tax credit that they get. They, they have to report that every year, too. There's a if young woman took working CPA in the office funding that along used to with do it, that. that would have to be reported. That's, so they get a fee yeah. for that, right. too. So uh, Can you ask? Um, Bill, maybe you talk to Joe Bart. Can you ask him if any other town did they set up the procedures and guidelines for? Yeah, well, I can ask. Yeah. You know, if he said that, you maybe maybe some other town already had oh, yeah. that in place. If they have something in place, yeah. you don't have to reinvent it. Right. Let's take a look. <clears throat> Jim hit the nail right on the head. The town of Weston has been battling seven years for one of those proposals, not in my backyard. And even Sunland, it sounded like a good idea. They had a, a small area that they wanted to have for affordable housing, but the developer was not happy unless he could have 40 units, right. not four. So they have a certain threshold that they would like in order to make some money. So the devil is always going to be in the detail, but it's, it's a start. You know, like I said, just think about that. Yeah, and you know we can we we don't have to rush into it, um, but you know, like I said, we can ask Joel other questions, and just if somebody has it, what about this? What about that? You know, really play a uh, the uh, you know 
to Joel's point, to be the devil's advocate and look at the bad side, what could happen? Because there's always, for every good, there's always a wrong with it. Somebody's going to find out a loophole. They just well, try it's to for us to work on that too. Yeah. What are the ads? Yeah. You know, okay. we have time on that one, that's good. Um, you all saw my letter about to the select board about the affordable housing and some exploration coming up. The uh, initial proposal was to meet June 20th. Marlo says he can't make that date, so I doubt it'll be that date. We're waiting for a reply back and what, see what other they propose. Was Marlo's proposal regarding the water of the... Marlo is the best one to discuss that, yes. So that's why he was included? That, that was why okay. I included him in, in, that, in that potential. So this is just basically, um, you know, we're, we're coming, we, we, we have learned that there is a sunset coming up on some of the affordable housing. Correct. That was something Larry conveyed to us that we did not know. We're passing it along to the select board because whatever's going to be done about it, they're going to have to do it. That's right. So I mean, uh, if, if this gentleman comes back with the over 40 housing proposal for Winfield, we may have a little bit of negotiation with that. But we need to find out, well, we, we need to get together and find out what are the, what are the overall options of what, do, what can we do and what can't we do and most of it's going to be upon a board of selectmen, you're right. So they're the ones that will be doing let's make a deal. So it's almost like this should have, uh, yeah, I'm sorry it came up the way it did. Well, not, not sorry how can it came you up. Have, how can you have the selectmen make a deal if it's a deal with zoning? No, 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 it's not. Not, not with zoning, with, with the other things. I'm, what I wish we had thought to include it in the master plan update. I think it just wasn't on our radar as we were. We, we, we didn't know that. Larry we, did the work after we had finished the master well, plan. Well, it wasn't even Larry, it was the lady that yeah. was, it was here. She was, she was the one that told us about the sunset clause, right. and we didn't even know, we didn't have no idea about that. I thought they were all in perpetuity, yeah. but we didn't know. I'm glad she brought it up, because at least it's not... Well, you're going to lose it next month or next year. Yeah. We have roughly five years and then 13 years to do something or try to do something. So. Well, we've got to keep that on the books because doing nothing is not going to be the answer here. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. So. I guarantee you the developer. Is oh, yeah. To take exactly. It off. Yeah, but and, and, and to, the, to the PVPC, this is not something you do overnight. This takes some no. time. It right. can take time. So you start now. I don't know if a forty thousand dollar water pipe repair is enough leverage. So, uh, but that's not our concern. Right. So, no, but it was brought up in the it, it in was, the meeting. Uh, yeah. How many units was that, Jimmy? Over there? That's not. The they units. have they have twenty five units of that. I think five of them, or f either four or five. No. Either five or six are affordable. And the rest are. The rest of market rate. <clears throat> yeah. So, so once you hit the 20 or 25 percent threshold, the whole group of them count, even if only four, even if that small amount is the actual affordable. So I also did talk with David Nixon about annual town meeting, our fall town meeting, which is uh, had tentatively, it's about a mid October date. Um, I have the calendar handy. Um, I think uh, he was looking at the 18th of October for okay. fall town meeting. And um, I said that we are really, we really want to work, get Pine Valley Planning Commission working on prototype bylaws for, we need a bylaw for recreational marijuana and we need a bylaw for MS4, bylaw amendments for MS4. Yeah. I, tell you, I, don't, I really don't like the term recreational marijuana. Do you call it recreational alcohol drinking? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Larry did have a distinction about that, but uh, um, we have to distinguish between medical it, it, it and... It tries and, uh, to make it more palatable. Uh, in MS4, uh, yeah. which is... So those are going to be our targets for fall town meeting. Okay. Okay. Got I have nothing else. else. Anybody have anything? No. Just motion to adjourn.
I want to make sure everybody gets a copy yep. of that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings history, thank you and thank you, guys.